I worked with Fresno County um, Department of Mental Health um, since 1994. And um, I've been working there for over 20 years. Um, I work with different populations. I work with, um, you know, the Hmong population, Laotian, Cambodian, all the Asian populations and other ethnicity as well. Um, I, I work as a case manager, helping people. Um, I like working with people, so I, I, I enjoy working with people and mostly I like to run groups because you hear different stories from different people and you know af afterwards you feel like you know there's something that everybody share their story so um, it makes you feel like you're able to help some and then other people feel like oh I'm not alone because they they also have the same problem as mine you know people come in there and they share their story and it just makes other feel like they're not alone. June of 2018 and um, that night I was taking a shower but when I got to my underarm I felt a little tiny bump. It was very hard. I didn't know what it was. At first I thought it was like a hard pimple but then and then I didn't think of anything. I just kind of you know, do my normal things. And then maybe a two, one or two weeks later, I had a doctor's appointment with my um, primary doctor. And it was for my physical. So she did the exam also and she felt it. And that's when she told me that um, I would have to go get a mammogram just to be sure that it's not cancer. And she sent me to Clovis Community and I got the mammogram. The nurse that was assigned to me told me that it was, it was actually a nurse and a doctor that told me that um, I, I was cancer positive, that it's cancer. And at that moment, I didn't know what to think or how I was feeling. I was just, I wanted to cry, but I couldn't cry either because I was so scared and I felt like, is this gonna be the last, you know, I, I don't know. I just thought I was gonna die. The doctors that I met with, they, they didn't tell me, but it was the nurse that um, was assigned to me from Clovis Community. She told me that she was a um, cancer survivor herself. She also had breast cancer. So she, um, after talking to her, I felt like, you know, she wasn't just trying to support me emotionally, but she really went through it and she knew what what I'm feeling, you know. She tells me that if I have any questions, I can always call her, she's assigned to me. So I have her number, if I have any concerns I can or questions, I can always call her and, you know, she, she follows up with me too. A lot of the staff that works there have cancer. They're um, cancer survivors, so um, she told me that for me not to be afraid, that um, I was still at a very early stage. Um, after that, they set up an appointment for me to um, go meet the whole team at Clovis Community again. And I went there and they sent, um, they have the surgeon, they have two oncologists on site, and the nurse that was assigned to me at, from Clovis Community. So it was like a whole team and they explained to me what their job is and what they're going to be doing with me. And so they introduced themselves to me and just kind of explained what they will be working with me. I felt like they were very supportive. I'm still at the stage where they can help me. So they, they were willing to work with me right away. I was just afraid to hear that they can't do anything. But, you know, after meeting with them, um, I felt like I still have hope. So that's why I was willing to let them treat me. 2018, that's when I um, found out that I had cancer. And then my um, appointment for surgery was July 26, 2018. So that's when I had my first surgery. And then in August, I had a follow-up two weeks after my surgery with my um, surgeon. And then um, that's when she told me that she wanted to do the second surgery, just to make sure that um, she got all the tissue out. When I started the radiation, what they did was they had like a mold that was made just for my body. 
And at each time when I go in, they would have me lay on that mold. And um, they also mark my certain parts of my body so that they can shoot from different angles every time when I go in. And from there, um, I have to say that the process was not painful at all. They would have me lay down on the mold just so that my body doesn't move so much. And then each time when I go in, they would shoot the laser and it's like red, red um, lines that I can see. And it's from different angles. The process itself is, I want to say less than five minutes. It's, you know, the whole thing, it's probably going to be like 15 minutes, but the laser part probably takes maybe five minutes because I didn't know what to expect. I was a little scared, but then, um, you know, as I keep going, it's, it wasn't anything scary, but, you know, as you keep going through the session, that area that they're shooting the laser into starts feeling very um, sensitive, and it felt like, um, like you have sunburn. My oncologist told me that I would need six sessions. I would go in every day, every day for six weeks. At first, I thought it was once a week. I was like, yay, but um, after a while, I found out it was every day that I have to attend. Right now, I'm still following up with my oncologist for the next five years um, until they can determine if you know I'm di um, cancer free. I am a Hmong woman, and I think that a lot of the barriers for us Hmong women are, um, you know, not believing in a lot of the medical treatments um, and still believe more in the herbal medicine um, until it's too late, then they would go and seek medical help. With the scientific proof, it's you, I personally still believe in herbal in certain things, but you know when it's when it's um, an illness that's in your body and it's not spiritual, it would have to be medical help that that's going to be able to help you. We tend to be in denial when we don't feel the pain or we don't have any pains. We are in denial um, until you start feeling pain and that's too late already. I have no symptoms at all. I think the only thing I noticed was just feeling a little tired. In the early stage of cancer, um, you don't feel anything. And I think that's part of the reason why a lot of women, especially in the Hmong community, they are in denial that they really have cancer. The responsibility of taking your, your um, health taking care of your health is yourself. After I survived my cancer, um, my advice to all Hmong women is to get mammogram checkup. And do not be in denial if you are diagnosed with cancer. You need the treatment right away. After I was diagnosed with cancer, I was very scared that I was gonna die and I felt like I didn't have any time left. I thought I was gonna lose everything, my family, my children. I felt like, you know, is this gonna be it for me? I still have a, a lot to do that I still haven't done. I haven't seen my kids get married. I didn't have any grandkids yet. And at that time, I was, I tell myself, I need to do everything to cure this cancer because I don't want to die yet. I'm still too young. I'm not ready to die. So that's, that's why I, you know, decided to go through the treatment. And I didn't really care what I had to go through to survive at that time. Um, I have too much to lose, you know at that time. And that's why I was willing to go through everything. The lesson that I learned from this illness is that, you know, don't be scared. Don't be scared and don't be in denial. Um, if doctors are willing to help you, let them help you, you know. Do everything in your power to help yourself too. 
I got a lot of support from my children, my husband. Um, I don't have a lot of siblings, so I get a lot of support from other families too, but mainly it's from my, my husband and my kids. I think it kind of opened up the kids' eyes to see that, you know, life is precious, that you can lose somebody at blank. We don't realize how fast things can happen. Out of the blue, I was diagnosed with cancer, and I think that kind of opened up everybody's eyes that, you know, we just can't take anything for granted. I feel like life is very precious. Every day I live my life, it has meaning. Um, I'm not just living that, you know, day by day, like how I used to, but now it's like, I feel like, you know, my life is getting shorter and shorter, and I'm getting older too, so I just, you know, it's, it has more meaning to me, um, and I try to live the best that I can and enjoy everything as if there's no tomorrow.